Greyhound Grognaut here. If you like the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Um, hit the bell so you get notified. You know, all that other good stuff that all the channels say. And uh, feel free to visit my blog um, and my Patreon. Um, links are down below. Now, enjoy the show. Fine. Hey everybody, Greyhog Grognard here, newly shorn, and um, today I wanted to explore a pivotal and kind of hard to get at piece of Greyhawk history, and that is the rise of Ayus. Um, we're told about this in a couple of different places, and the information is kind of scattered hither and yon, um, and some things are just mentioned obliquely, and uh, but if you put it all together you can really make a timeline that works and I thought it would be fun to kind of work through uh, some of that and maybe uh, tease out a, a uh, connection that might not be obvious at first glance uh, and just for everybody who isn't aware Ayuz is the evil Cambian demigod in the northern uh, reaches of the world of Greyhawk in the Flaness he is the uh, the son of the witch queen Igwilv and the demon prince Grazd. Um, and uh, as the setting goes on, he becomes more and more powerful as he conquers more stuff. He's kind of like the uh, the dark lord of the of the setting. But what I'm going to do today is kind of go back into his uh, origins and, and early history and see if we can't find something cool. So here we go. Okay. So first thing we're going to start off with is the timeline, the historical timeline from the Gazetteer. This is also the same timeline that's in the uh, Guide to the World of Greyhawk. And looking at this, it's tiny type, so you'll have to pardon me here. Um, we have in 479, the common year, we have the Might of Ayus Grows. So 479, Might of Ayus grows. And let's make that so that people can actually read it. Okay. And we'll also stick a pin in 576, which is the current year. Okay. So, we have the um, Ayus growing. And what that means is that um, a, a hundred years ago or so, before the current year, um, the lands that are now known as the realm of Ayus and the Horn Society were just a bunch of petty nobles, just like we see with the um, the Bandit Kingdoms, right? So it's just imagine north of White Sill Lake, uh, you've got the, just these bunch of little fiefdoms, each one maybe five or six or seven hexes on the Darlene map in in size, and Ayus captures one of those he shows up pretending to be the son of the noble who has just conveniently died and um within a, a couple of years he takes over and starts expanding out his realm um now as part of that we've also got in uh, s4 lost caverns of Sajkanth, uh in the introduction we see, nearly a century ago, the Archmage Igwil sent her evil minions to conquer the lands around her abode. Right? So, nearly a, a century ago. So, let's call that, because, ago from 576. So, we'll say 470, I don't know, 8. Igwilf conquers Perrinland. So we can already see that there is a relationship between Igwilf starting her conquest and Ayuz starting his conquest. And the reason this is significant is because Ayuz, of course, is Igwilf's son. Th 
by means of the uh, the demon Grast. So the, the the fact that they are operating in tandem like this makes perfect sense. Now we've also got some information from I Use the Evil, which tells us somewhere in here uh, the uh, spawn of evil as of 479, yada yada yada, uh, son of Grast, um, takes him about a decade. Okay, a little, a little more than a decade, it says. So we've got the might of Ayus grows, and it takes a little more than a decade. So we're gonna let's stick a pin in that in say 490. Uh, uh, Ayus completes his conquests, right? So we've got Igwilf starting in 478, 479. Ayus is starting his conquest. He's he wraps his up by 490. So what else happens in 490? Well, it all it just so happens that according to S4, Lost Caverns of Solskans, her empire only lasted slightly more than a decade. So, let's say Igwil conquers Perrinland, what's more than a decade is 488, so let's call that 489. Igwil is overthrown. What do we see here? Oh my, there seems to be a synergy here. So, just to go through this, 478, Igwil makes her conquest. A year later, her son starts his conquests. A decade later, Igwilv is overthrown and her power is, is broken. And a year later, Ayuz stops his expansion. And then, one last bit of info that we get, again, from the chronology in the guide, in the, in the uh, Gazetteer, is that in 505... Ayuz is imprisoned by Zagig. So only 15 years after he's halted, he is actually to the point where Zagig, can, uh, the, the Archmage, can imprison him and, and uh, beneath the, the dungeons of Castle Greyhawk. And, and he's kept there for many decades. So I think what we're seeing here is that there's definitely... And in an alignment, right? There's there's definitely something in there between Igwilv and Ayuz and the relative strengths and when they're operating. And I think what we're seeing, I think without a doubt, the fact that Igwilv loses her power and then a year later Ayuz stops his expansion, I think that's key. That has to be crucial. I don't know if it's intentional on Gygax's part, in which case, if it is, that was just awesome setting stuff up like that. Uh, and that the, uh, the, the author, uh, Carl Sargent of, of uh, I Use the Evil, picked up on it and was able to plug that into the intro uh, material into, into that module. So if that's a, if that's a deep cut that they, they were thinking about, that's great. But I really think that we're seeing a... A, 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 a parallel uh, and that as Igwilv grows in power so does Ayuz and as soon as Igwilv loses her power Ayuz loses the ability to expand his empire and I think that's because at some level Igwilv was helping him with some of the, the great magic items that she found in the caverns of Sajkanth and that also explains because if we look in the actual adventure the, uh, uh, the there there are the, the the way the wilderness adventure is set up is that there are different uh, opposing kingdoms who are also sending out parties and that's why there's a, a ticking clock and and and, thing, and, and so forth. Um, so one of those uh, we we see is we have the Ketites and we have the Perinlanders um, who are also going after that. And if I'm not mistaken. Um, Ayuz is also sending uh, a, a, uh, a an expedition out to the, to the to the caverns, and I think what's happening is Ayuz is 
now that he's been freed from the dungeons of Castle Greyhawk, uh, what we're seeing is that he's sending an expedition into the caverns in order to recover some of those artifacts that his mother was using to help him in, in expanding his empire. And I think um, that's, that's a really important and a really... I love that kind of synergy that you can pick and tease out of the out of the sources here. We're looking at three different books printed over the course of of decades, and they all plug together so perfectly to make this timeline that makes sense because we're seeing Igwil helping his son, her son, uh, and then as soon as she's taken out of the picture, he has to put the brakes on. And then when he is freed again, he's sending people to go recover some of the artifacts that his mother was using to help him so he can restart his, his campaign of conquest. Anyway, um, I think this is just a great, uh, a great thing that we see put together there. And, um, <coughs> you know, let me hear your thoughts on this, uh, this little timeline in the, in the comments. And if you think I'm, uh, I'm off base as to the relationship with Igwild helping I use, uh, I'd love to hear your reasoning. So, Thanks very much. Uh, don't forget, we've got the Kickstarter still going. Um, link will be down in the description. And uh, thanks, everybody, for your support. And, um, you know, hey, have great gaming. Talk to you later.